Good day, my audience. You are welcome to this channel, Dr. Fred Academy. Um, today, in this video, we shall be looking at the scapula. We shall be discussing the scapula. Uh, normally, yeah, we all know that the pectoral guido of the domestic animal is made up of three bones. And these three bones include the scapula, the clavicle, and the coracoid. But we all know that in the, in the course of uh, development, the clavicle is uh, usually lost or may exist as uh, a stump of bone or a slender bone uh, and present in the muscle called the brachiocephalicus muscle okay, at a region called the clavicular intersection. Okay? And then the coracoid exists as a it's a vestige, okay, a remnant of bone which is attached to a part of the scapula called the supraglenoid tubercle. And then the most and the, the fully developed bone amongst these three is the scapula, which is what we want to discuss today. So on my table here, I have um, the scapula bone. I shall be talking about the structures present on the scapula and the muscles that are attached to, to them. That is the relationship, the relationship between uh, this scapula and other nearby structures. Okay, I'll start by talking about the surfaces of the scapula, the borders of the scapula, and then the angles of the scapula. Now, remember that we are talking about the bovine scapula. The bovine scapula. In one of my videos uh, earlier on, I talked about the equine scapula. That is the scapula of the horse. So in this video, I am discussing majorly the bovine scapula because this is what we have before us. So the bovine scapula uh, is what we have before us. And this scapula is made up of two surfaces. That is the lateral surface. Okay, the two surfaces are the lateral surface which you, you can see here, and then the medial surface. The lateral surface, I will also talk about the three borders and then the three angles. The lateral surface is divided into two unequal parts, into two unequal parts by the spine of the scapula. So this is the spine, the spine of the scapula. Okay, this spine of the scapula divides the scapula into two unequal parts. You see a larger part and then a smaller part. Okay, these two parts are, uh, th this first one is called the, the supraspinous fossa, while the second one is called the infraspinous fossa. Okay, this is supraspinous fossa and then this is the infraspinous fossa. Uh, back to the spine of the scapula. The spine of the scapula has a little enlargement at its uh, middle portion, midway, between uh, its uh, dosal extremity and ventral extremity. There is this enlargement at this point called the tuba of spine. On this tuba of spine is attached a muscle called the trapezius. Okay, so coming downwards towards the ventral aspect of the spine is another uh, enlargement which is called the acromion process. The acromion process. So this is the acromion process. On this process is attached a muscle called the deltoidus muscle. Okay, the deltoidus. All right. Now, looking at on, on this supraspinous fossa lies a muscle. Okay, in this supraspinous fossa lies a muscle called the supraspinatus, while in the infraspinous fossa lies a muscle called the Infra lies a muscle called the infraspinatus. Okay, so here, here we have supraspinatus, here we have the infraspinatus muscles lying in these locations. Okay, let's look at the medial aspects. Having seen the lateral, so we'll go to the medial aspect. This is the medial aspect of the scapula. On this medial aspect, we have a depression. Okay, we have a slight depression almost at the center of the scapula and then this depression is called the subscapular fossa the subscapular fossa and in this area lies a muscle 
called the subscapularis. The subscapularis. We also have two triangular shaped uh, roughened areas on these uh, extremities, on these angles. Okay, there's a triangular shaped roughened area. These areas are called the area serrata. Area serrata. And the muscles attaching to these areas are called the serratus muscle. The serratus muscle. Okay. Uh, having talked about the surfaces, let's go over with uh, the three borders. Okay. The three borders include the dosal of vertebral border. It is called the dosal of vertebral border because it is the part that projects or that is in close opposition with the vertebral column. Okay, so it is called the dosal border or the vertebral border. This is called the cranial border because you see it is convex in shape. It is convex. Okay, dosal it is convex except downward ventrally when it starts becoming a little bit uh, straight and concave. Okay, this is called the cranial border because it is the aspect that faces cranially. Okay, now this slightly concave aspect is the caudal border because it is a part that faces caudally. Okay, now these are the three angles. We said the dosal or vertebral border, the cranial border, and then the caudal border. Let's look at the angles, the three angles. The three angles include the, uh, the cranial angle. This is the cranial angle. Okay, this is the cranial angle. This is the caudal angle, cranial angle because it is facing cranially or pointing cranially, while this is the caudal angle because it is pointing caudally. And then we have the ventral angle, this is the ventral angle or articular angle. Why is it called ventral angle? Because it is, it is called ventral angle because it is pointing ventrally, okay? It's pointing ventrally. It's also called articular angle because it is, it carries the portion it carries the articular surface okay called the glenoid cavity uh, uh, whereby uh, or through which or with which it articulates with the head of the humerus so this is called the articular angle or the ventral angle so this ventral angle carries the glenoid cavity so in this glenoid cavity or this glenoid cavity articulates with the head of the Humerus. And this, the junction between this, this glenoid cavity and the humerus is, on the head of the humerus is what we call the shoulder joint. Okay, looking at this cranial aspect, again, okay, on this ventral angle, looking at this point is an enlargement, okay? This enlargement is called the supraglenoid tubercle. It is on the cranial aspect of this glenoid cavity. So this is called the supraglenoid tubercle now remember that this is the lateral side of this bone so on the medial side of this bone of this supraglenoid tubercle on the medial side you have a stump of bone okay a stump of bone now this stump of bone just a small bone this small structure attaching to the supraglenoid, supraglenoid tubercle is called so this stump of bone is called the coracoid process okay the coracoid process. This coracoid process attaches or gives attachment to the muscle called coracobrachialis. The coracoid process gives attachment to a muscle called cora, uh, coracobrachialis. Okay. Don't forget that this this point is the neck. Okay. This is the neck of the scapula. This is the neck of the scapula. Okay. Um, at this juncture, I am convinced that I have told you almost everything as pertains to this uh, uh, bone. Uh, let me also add that on the dosal border, on the dosal or vertebral border of this bone, is where you have the scapular cartilage. Okay, the scapular cartilage is usually attached to on this point, and that is where the muscle called rhomboidus. Okay, is attached. So that scapular cartilage, okay, sometimes called suprascapular cartilage. Uh, so it, it gives attachment to the muscle called rhomboidus. Okay, at this point. Uh, thank you very much for listening.
and uh, watching this video i hope you were greatly blessed um, do well to subscribe to this channel dr fred academy if you have not done so and don't forget to click on the notification bell icon when you have uh, uh, subscribed thank you